All right, I have a few examples of multiplying fractions. And of course the fractions have algebraic variables in them. So, multiply the top first. So, m x times ax. Well, the coefficient first, so there's no coefficient, so it's understood to be a 1. So first of all, I multiply 1 times 1, and I get 1. I don't need to write the 1, but I'm going to in the beginning. Then m, are there any other m's? Nope. Okay. Any other a's? Nope. Uh-oh, there's two x's. I could write x, x, like that. I'm going to simplify this. All right, but let's do the bottom. Coefficients, 4 times 2, 8. And then there's two y's. Now, we're going to simplify by using exponents. I don't need to write the 1. m a x squared. Do you know why? Do you know why I have x squared? Because there were two x's. I bet you know what I'm going to write on the bottom. I hope you guessed 8y squared. And that's the final answer for multiplying <coughs> on that one. All right, this one's a little tricky. I have a fraction times a fraction, and then a fraction times something that's not a fraction. So first of all, I'm going to do the first one. So I'm going to have x times a, so it's going to be xa, y times y, y, y. Then I'm going to do the x over y times the b. I'm going to put that b over 1. Whenever you don't have a fraction, you can make it a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom. So x times b, well, let's write that minus sign here. x times b, xb, y times 1 is 1 times y, just like that. All right, now I'm going to simplify it a little bit if I can. Well, I can't do anything there, so xa, but on the bottom I could write that as y squared minus xb over 1 times y is just y. And now we have the answer there. All right, one more to try. If you want, stop the video, try this one for yourself, and then um, check the answer. So again, I have to distribute this first part times both of these. So x squared times x squared, x squared times x squared, y squared times y, minus sign, x squared times 3y to the third, so x squared times 3 y to the third, and then y squared times m, y squared times m. Then I'm going to simplify by combining my exponents on any terms that are the same. So on the top here, I could write that as x to the fourth over y to the third minus 3x squared y third, 3 x squared y third over, I'm running out of room here, m y squared. And that's the answer. <clears throat> I hope you can see that. Sorry I had to write so small. Um, I'm going to do a few more examples. Let me clean my board. All right, two more nice examples. So this one, there's three things in the parentheses. So I'm going to take this thing outside, multiply it times all three of them. This one's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to do it right down here. So I'm going to write AB times XAB and C squared times C plus, then I'm going to do AB times 2BX over C squared. So I'm going to put that over 1. It didn't have a fraction, so I made it a fraction minus a, B times 4 over C squared, C squared. <clears throat> now, I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have 2A, so that could be A squared, 2Bs, that could be B squared, and I have an X. So we're going to put our simplified answer up here. So that would be X, A squared, B squared, all over... C squared. No, C to the third. Two C's plus one C. 
Then I'm going to have plus a, oh, let's put the coefficient first, so 2 a x b squared. a x b squared. Doesn't really matter the order that you write these, as long as you write them all there. All right, and then this last part, minus. 4, always put the coefficient first when you're simplifying, AB over C to the what do you think? 2 plus 2 is 4, C to the 4th. So, you see that answer? So it really should look like this, X, A squared, B squared over C to the 3rd, plus 2AX, B squared over C squared, minus 4AB over C to the 4th. My little board here ran out of room. There's the final answer after distributing to that. Now, sometimes you get so that you can do this in your head and skip, skip the messy step that I erased by looking at this and saying C squared times C is C to the 3rd. Add them up right away and then say, well, I have an X, 2 A's, A squared, 2 B's, B squared. So if you think you can do that step, Go ahead and try it. <clears throat> All right, so here we have one more. So I'm going to do the m times that, so that's going to be a, x, m, p, it doesn't really matter the order, over z, m, k, minus, let's put a 1 underneath this one, so it's going to be 2. When I do the m, m and m to the 4th, we'll call that m to the 5th p to the fourth, and on the bottom here, z times 1 is just z. Now, I could call this the answer, but do you notice that something can reduce in this one? Yeah, that m can reduce with that m. So now I have axp over zk minus 2 m to the 5th, p to the 4th, all over z. Final answer. So sometimes after you do some multiplying, some parts of the problem can reduce. Don't forget to look for that when you're doing these because answers should always be reduced. Okay. Okay, I got a whole bunch of examples with exponents, positive and negative, positive and negative numbers. It looks pretty scary here. 4 squared means 4 times 4, 16. 4 to the negative 2, no meaning at all. You can only do exponents if they're positive. So, how can I get that to be a positive exponent? I can write it 1 over 4 squared. Now, I can write it as 1 over 16. All right? So, you can't use exponents if they're negative. Now, this is a tricky problem. Negative 4 squared. Order of operations say you do exponents first. So, circle the part with the exponent. 4 squared is 16. So, negative 16. And there's the answer. This one, a little bit different. Let's erase that circle now. Negative 4 squared. This one is the quantity, in parentheses, negative 4 squared. That means negative 4 times negative 4. What's that answer? Positive 16. <clears throat> All right. This one, negative, and then 4 to the negative 2. Do the exponent part first. Whoa, I can't do 4 to the negative 2. So I still got this negative sign. Then I have to write that as 1 over 4 squared. Well, now I can do 1 over 4 squared. That's 1 over 16. And there's still a negative out in front. And that's the final answer. Negative 4 to the negative 2. Well, I can't do the exponent negative 2, so I have to make it a fraction. 1 over, and that was a negative 4, now to the positive 2. So 1 over negative 4 times negative 4, 1 over 16. So there's some examples of negative exponents. Be careful. 
All right, they're a little bit tricky. It looked like all those problems would have the same answer. These two had the same answer. These two had the same answer. Hmm. All right, be careful.